Hi everyone, and welcome to another Heroes and Bosses video. This time I'm going to be painting a desert camo scheme on the Mad Cat I primed in the last episode. The first thing I'm going to do with this mech is create a Zenithal priming effect using three colors of primer. So as you can see, the mech is already primed in black, but next I'm going to spray down on the miniature from a 45 degree angle using a matte gray primer. I'm then going to follow that up with a matte white primer spraying the mech directly from above. This is not a necessary step, and really, Zenithal priming is no substitute for good highlighting. Next I'm going to choose a brown, a yellow, and a gray that I'm going to be using for my camo paint job. I've decided I'm first going to cover my entire mech using Carrick Stone. I'm also going to be using a wet palette for this paint job since I want my paints a bit thinner than normal. If the paint's too thick, it's going to negate the effect of the Zenithal priming. And as you can see, I forgot to remove the arms before painting, so I'll do that now and put them back on the sticks with a white tack. I'd like to note that I did not create this paint scheme. The first time I saw it used was by B1B Flyer from Camo Specs Online. B1B Flyer is a fantastic painter, and I'll post a link to his channel in the description below. So you should be able to see that my paint is quite thin for this base coat, and all I'm really trying to do is get a nice even coverage on all the pieces. Now I'm going to move on to the yellow. For this part, I'll be using Averland Sunset. I'm going to use this color to create a thin line that coils and snakes around the body of the mech. It doesn't have to be one continuous line, but you should try to begin and end your lines in places that aren't noticeable. I'm still keeping my paints thin on a wet palette at this point. A thin paint works fine for this part, and also the details on mechs are very small and easy to obscure with a thicker paint. It's difficult to get certain camera angles, but my yellow line is actually looping completely around the legs and arms of the mech in a spiral. Now that I feel there's enough yellow on the mech, I'm going to switch to a grey. I'm using a mix of Skaven Blight Dinge by Citadel and Filthy Suit by Army Painter, which, if you don't have, is the same as Citadel Storm Vermin Fur. So for this part of the camo scheme, I'm going to trace around both sides of the yellow line I've made with the grey. I'm using a smaller brush for this part, and the thickness of my grey lines are about half that of the yellow lines. And incidentally, I added a few extra yellow lines on the top of the mech and across his feet, just to fill in some of the spaces that I thought had too much empty brown space. Now that the camo paint is finished, I'm going to use P3's pig iron to paint the lasers and machine guns. I'm also using this color to paint some of the metalwork on the back of the legs and the vents on the underside of the mech. For the two missile racks, I'm going to take the pig iron that's already on my wet palette and mix in a small amount of XV88 to create a dull bronze color. As you can see here, I'm using a wide flat brush and I'm just going to lightly brush over the tips of the missiles from four different directions. Once that's done, I'm going to use a size 1 brush to go around the outside missiles and make sure they're all completely covered. The inner missiles are going to be obscured by the wash I'm going to add next, so there's no need to completely cover them. Now that all the base colors are on the miniature, I'm going to move on to the shading. I'm going to use one color for the entire mech, Agrax Earthshade. The shade is going to make all the tiny details stand out, and at the same time marry together all the colors we use for our camo.
I'm pausing every once in a while just to make sure there aren't any heavy pools of the shade anywhere, and if there are, I'm just going to mop them up with my brush. Now that the shade is done, I'm going to leave the mech for about 15 to 20 minutes or so to let it dry, and then move on to the highlighting. Highlighting a miniature with this kind of paint scheme is a bit different since it's essentially broken up into many smaller pieces by the camo. I'm going to start off by retouching the brown areas with the original Carrick Stone. If you look down at the front of the mech from a 45 degree angle, all the parts you can see are those that are getting the majority of the highlighting. As with any miniature, you want to avoid hitting any of the small grooves that the wash has sunk into. I'm painting as close to them as I can without spilling any paint into them. If you do, however, you can always wait for the paint to dry, then use a size 0 or 1 brush and just retouch them with some more Agrax Earthshade. Next, I'm going to brighten the uppermost areas of the brown areas by adding a roughly equal amount of Vallejo's Ivory to my Carrick Stone. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the yellow. I'll start off by retouching all the yellow areas with some pure Averland Sunset. I'm focusing the majority of my paint on the front of the mech for a couple of reasons. First of all, most of the interesting details are on the front of this mini, and second, I've decided I want this mech to appear as though it's facing the sun, a feature I'll exaggerate when I paint the cockpit. The next thing I'm going to do is just add some edge highlights to the brown and yellow areas. I'm going to start off by mixing equal parts Averland Sunset and Ivory. I'm not going to thin this paint down, but I'm going to make sure there's only a small amount of my brush, and then just lightly brush the edges of the places I've already highlighted. For the edge highlights on the brown areas, which have now been highlighted up to a light beige, I'm going to be using Ushabdi Bone. For the vents on the back, I'm going to give them a light dry brushing. For the missiles, I'm going to use a slightly lighter metallic, this time Gunmetal by Army Painter, and then I'm going to mix in a bit of XV-88. I'm doing a dry brush over the missiles this time, but I'm only pulling my brush downward just to get the top halves of the warheads. For the lasers and guns, I'm going to use pure Gunmetal and gently dry brush the tops of these. So that concludes the desert paint scheme. In the third and final part of the Mad Cat paint job, I'll be doing my favorite part, which is dueling the cockpit. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you very much for watching.